I would actually argue that privacy hasn't changed, what our notion or expectations of privacy haven't changed all that much over the centuries even. Uh, going back to Lady Godiva and the famous Peeping Tom incident, there was an agreement, she had privacy expectations, and they were breached by the Peeping Tom. Uh, however, I would say that every so often we have a reinvigorated case to look at privacy. And one of the reasons right now that we are looking at privacy is just the whole information systems and the internet age. And that allows our privacy um, to be almost separated from us. Before, what we would argue is that you shouldn't be looking at me, you shouldn't be listening to the words that I say. And so all the information about me was connected to me physically. It was my physical body, it was the words that I was using. Um, but now, what I say, what I write, what I uh, look like is separated from us. And so it can leave us and we, you can have your privacy violated even if you aren't physically there. And that's somewhat novel. It first came up with uh, photography, actually with um, a famous law review case. Uh, but now when we have it on the internet and so much of our information is out there and separated from us, it makes it really easy for the information to be what they would call greased and be able to move out throughout the land. Um, but the second trend that kind of makes it even more interesting is not only can the information move away from us and be greased, uh, easily slip away to other people, but it's also somewhat sticky in that they can also come back together and form relationships. The information can be in relationships to one another that we fi might find vulnerable. So people can keep um, information for a long time about us in databases, um, which just makes it more vulnerable. So it, while it leaves our body, while it, the, pri the information isn't necessarily attached to us in any way in the words that we use and what we look like, um, it leaves us, but, and yet it can be consolidated in a database and stick around for years to come. So before we worried about gossip, it was one person talking to another and invading our privacy, uh, distributing information we didn't like. Now we have, you know, our searches are stored, um, our behavioral habits in shopping is stored, and we don't even realize what's being stored and for how long. And that, that makes the information about us a little bit more vulnerable. Um, it's also going to be more valuable, but it's also really what the problem is that it's more vulnerable to us. So that's, I think, what renews our privacy concerns right now. Um, now, what's remained the same is that we still have this concept that we, we care about what people know about us. It makes a big difference to us who knows what and when. So we like to say uh, we like to share information. It's important for relationships that we share information with corporations, with firms, with our friends, our uh, husbands and wives. And yet we expect that it stops. We don't expect that it's just out there and goes on forever. So I'd say that is what remains the same. Our expectations of what happens with privacy remains the same. Physically, what's going on with privacy is a little bit, with information, excuse me, physically what's going on with information is different.